I'm Sarah Burkhart, and I'm from Arizona State, and working with um, Dr. Witt, who's a professor of astronomy here at University of Toledo. And we're looking into um, the abundance of small dust grains relative to larger dust grains in the interstellar medium. Um, it's kind of tough to see up here, but you can see dust clouds as dark regions in the galactic plane here. Um, they're actually everywhere, but it's hard to see them at um, higher and lower latitudes because of the lack of contrast. So um, dust absorbs UV radiation, UV light, and um, it's heated by the photons and then it radiates in the infrared so we can detect dust using infrared instruments. So this is um, spectrum of dust emissions and we're concentrating on the 12 micron wavelength which um, detects um, smaller grains and the 100 micron wavelength which detects larger dust grains. And the small dust grains are POS, they're polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon molecules. Polycyclic refers to the um, molecular loop structure. Aromatic is the strong carbon bond, and hydrocarbon means obviously that it has um, hydrogen and carbon atoms. Um, so these are dust emission maps that we use. Um, the top one is the IRAS 100 micron map, and um, we use that one for the larger grains. Um, the IRAS instrument is a satellite that was launched in 83, and it was the first satellite to do an all-sky map. Um, we use satellites because a lot of the, most of the um, infrared waves are absorbed in the Earth's atmosphere. So um, the lower map is the WISE W3-12 micron map. Um, it has better resolution. Um, the IRAS is about six, four to six, arc minutes per pixel, and this one is about um, four arc, or six arc seconds per pixel. So we, and we also use this one to detect the smaller grains. Um, this one was launched in 09, and um, you can see similarities between the two. Um, there's higher intensities at the galactic plane, which is due to the hot stars that live there, but we're looking for significant differences between the two, and we're going to try to determine why those exist. So we decided to look at small clouds, um, small enough that we could get um, a high range of intensities in a, in a single tile from each survey. Um, we wanted clouds that were far enough away from hot stars that they wouldn't be receiving direct UV radiation from them, and also clouds that weren't so dense that UV radiation would be blocked at some point. So this is an example, it's called MDM-30. And um, analyzing this and other clouds, we got kind of a baseline ratio for what to expect from the um, abundance of the small grains um, relative to the large. And this gave us um, a correlation of about three. So. Um, we wanted to uh, look at um, other structures that might have differences from this baseline. Um, and one is a super, supernova remnant where the paws, the small dust grains, might be destroyed. So this is the North Polar Spur, and it is thought to possibly be a supernova remnant. Um, and it's so large that we had to take three different regions to analyze at different latitudes. And what we found was that um, oops, this um, correlation, also linear, is closer to 2.6, which means that the um, paw, paw abundances are um, lower um, relative to the large grains. So. Um, that could help confirm that this is a supernova remnant. Um, what we need to do next is look at um, a region um, at a different longitude with the same latitudes that we used to look at the North Pole Spur, um, and then possibly look into other um, supernova remnants to see if they behave in a similar way. 
like the signal loop, sorry about that, which is pictured here. And thank you to Dr. Witt and Rick and everyone else. That's it. Any questions for Sarah? So presumably in the supernova remnants, the pods are destroyed. Possibly, Possibly. yeah. Um, is there any other relationship between the larger grains and the pods? Does one grow from the other, or are they uh, um, different materials? I'm not really sure. It's also possible in some environments for the pods to settle onto the larger grains so they're not detectable. Um, we also want to make sure that there aren't any variations other than um, the variations that we can detect in the interstellar radiation field. So we're kind of still looking into that, but that's kind of something that's been seen in supernova remnants. So. Yeah. What sort of compositional information can you get from the, these studies? Like, what? Beyond just that it's a polyaromatic hydrocarbon, can you see, for example, single wall nanotubes or anything? Uh, identify what you have? Um, I'm not really sure. Um, the, um, the pause, there, there are a large variety of um, combinations of these structures, and um, there are ions of them. And, they, they kind of just, we kind of have um, reduced them down to a family of similar spectra, so we know what we're looking at. All right. Well, let's thank you.